We're the Frantics. Welcome to the Frantic Show. We're the Frantics. We're the Frantics. We'll be here till we go. We're the Frantics. We're the Frantics. We all breathe lots of air. We're the Frantics. We're the Frantics. We like to stand over there. We're the Frantics. We're the Frantics. We stand for law and order. We're the Frantics. We're the Frantics. We control the Canadian border. We watch young women dress. We're the frantics, we're the frantics, we never make a mess. We're the frantics, we're the frantics, welcome to the frantic show. We're the frantics, we're the frantics, we'll be here till we go. I raise you a hundred. I call. Five aces. I guess it's mine. Not so fast. A summer affair. Love in the hills. Love in the marketplace. An affair to remember. The long boat cruise. Read them and weep. Mariah shrugged, realizing that she had to tell this old school friend the circumstances of her return. Scare the shit out of me. Black Black Bart! What? Black Bart! Black Bart! <laughs> Big enough for the both of us. This town ain't big enough for me. Go for your gun, stranger. No, go for your gun, stranger. Oh, no, even stranger. No, no, really strange, really silly. No, get get goofy, right? Downright, downright nutty. <laughs> yeah, like really dumb. <laughs> wow, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Squad car seven, squad car seven. Domestic dispute now in progress at five Forest Hill Road. Five Forest Hill Road. Proceed code three. Roger, we'll handle code three. Another code three. It's the most excitement we've had since that shootout at the bank last week. Something bothering you, Denton? You've been awful quiet since that shootout. Squad car seven, squad car seven. Shots fired at five Forest Hill Road. Proceed code two. Roger, we'll handle code two. You hear that? Shots fired. Finally, some excitement on the graveyard shift. Look alive, Denton. Poor Sydney. Six bullets through the chest. Well, I warned you. You two-tiny son of a... All right, open up in there at the police. Okay, Denton, get the door. Hello, I'm Officer Forklift. This is Officer Denton. Thank God you're here. Hey, what happened to your husband? He's been shot dead. Doesn't look dead to me. Does he look dead to you, Denton? Why is your partner staring at my legs? It's hard to say. He's normally a tit man. Aren't you two going to run along and catch that criminal while he's still in the neighborhood? Yeah, okay. Come on, Denton. Let's go. Hey, you're hesitating. Say, lady, you never gave us a description of that killer. Oh, didn't I? No. Silly me. Well, he was a tall, short man. And by that, I mean he had a mask, and it was hard to judge his height exactly. You're right, Denton. Something does smell funny around here. Look. I think I'd like to talk to her. You see what you can get out of her husband, okay? Lady, I'd like to talk to you in the other room in there. Mister, my partner would like a word with you.
I told you I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I can't get anything out of her. Why don't we switch and see if we can cross them up on their story? All right, Sydney, I want to hear your tale again from the top. Well, Officer Denton, we find ourselves alone. Did I tell you I thought you were kind of cute? Remind me of my husband somehow. Oh. Oh. Oh, I could go on like this forever. Why are you staring at my legs like that? Are you calling me a killer? Is that it? Is that your little game? Come on, out with it. You've got a shred of evidence. Are you calling me a killer? Stop it. I won't have it. Hey, Stop lady. It. Keep it down. I can't hear your husband. He's calling me a killer. Denton, forklift. Hi, Chief. What's the progress, men? Denton says that this woman murdered her husband. He has no proof. What nothing. do you got for me, Denton? He's pointing at her leg, Chief. It's nothing. No, he's well, pointing at the leg here. Let go! Let go! Let go! Are you animals? Let go! Huh? What's that, lady? A candy apple? No, that's a gun, Chief. Come on, sister. I got some questions for you downtown. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's Come go. on. Oh, don't look so smug. Come, Come on, lady. Oh, don't Burger, be Burger, Sergeant. Me. Murder one. Oh. Good work, Denton. Well, you did it again. On the construction site, there are two ways of doing a job, our way and the wrong way. This accident could have been prevented if he had worn proper safety boots. Hey, you want some fruit salad? No, thank you. This is some corn roast. This is the best corn roast I've ever been to. No, I hate it. You don't like corn? No. I can't eat the damn stuff. I ain't got no teeth. No teeth? Well, you're in luck. I just came from the office. My briefcase is full of dentures. Let's try a pair. Hey. Okay, try these. Try these. Those are nice. There, now how's that do you? Uh-uh. These are way too large. Too large? Oh. Well, I got something a little smaller. Those are stretching it a bit. Let's try these. Try that. Those are smaller. No, uh, these are way too small. Too small? Well, I got something halfway between the two. Let's see. Try these. These are, these are about right. Hey, that's not bad. Not bad? Hey, that's, that's great. There you go. OK. Hey, must be pretty handy being a denturist. <laughs> denturist? Oh, no, no, no. I'm an undertaker. Winter comes early to the valley. The highway drains my brain of blood. The wind, oh the wind, oh the wind, oh. Virginia, Virginia, take me to your hollow marketplace. Leonard Cohen. Rod McEwen, how are you? Long oh, time no see. Well. Uh, excuse me.
excuse me. Is this the office of rent a witness? Yes, it is. May I help you? Yes, I need to rent a witness. See, I was driving along the road and... Oh, I... don't tell me. It was a rear-ender. How did you know? Oh, you have sodomy written all over you. No, it was a car accident. Oh. A guy in a pinto. I killed him. I see. And you'd like us to fabricate a little story that would absolve you of this felony. Yes. Well, let's see what we have. Mr. Drummond should be free. Oh, no, he's busy with the Billy Carter affair. Um, Mr. Nimrod, oh, no, no, no. He's on permanent loan to the nuclear power industry. Um, uh, Mr. Teske is free. I'm sure he saw the whole thing. He did? He saw Teddy Kennedy try to rescue Mary Jo Kopechny. Oh. Mr. Teske, he is here at last. Please, have a seat. He's been expecting me? Oh, he hasn't stopped talking about you since the accident. Oh. Where is the poor beggar? There you are. I was just telling some of my friends. It was a butane lighter that exploded. There was no cocaine or ether there. Cocaine? Uh, the elevator. It lurched and you were thrown against that oh. young buxom woman, but oh, she wanted you so badly. What elevator? Uh, it was a, a 7B11. Oh. And then driving home. Huh? Almost killed by that maniac in the, uh... Red Buick? Had wheels and headlights, right? Right, right! <laughs> Doing 110 miles an hour. Well, he was parked. Driving a parked car. These crazy, drunken kids. But he, but he was over 60. Second childhood, senile old sot. What? And then when he almost ran me over. Did he? Oh it, oh, it was awful. I saw the whole thing. Yes, I saw the whole thing, too. Oh, it was terrible. Oh. And those stories he told the police. Well, he, well, he was dead. He'd been decapitated. Uh, oh, Come on. cut at the neck, blood gushing out and everything. Come on. Sympathy. Oh. The guy's going for sympathy. Oh, that's sickening. Now, don't you worry, uh... Durwood. Durwood Gosling. On the tip of his tongue. Oh. Don't you worry, Dur, that killer with a car hasn't got a leg to stand on. Or any arms, either. Driving without arms, without legs, oh, without a head. I now I ask you, where's justice? Well, I thought I could afford a little. Well, you can afford a lot because I won't rest until I see you reimbursed for your injuries. Injuries? Sure, your whiplash. Oh, whiplash. Yeah, right. and, and, your, and your wound here. The paper cut, and, paper, yeah. and your limp. Limp. Ow! And your, um... Acne? And no, don't push it, Durr. Oh. Your Honor, set Durr with Gosling free. Let justice rule supreme so that our men may walk free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for, um... Um... Derwood. Derwood, right. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for him. Oh! oh wow. Wow. The guy's great. That was A-OK. -okay. Oh, well, that'll be $200. You'll be great in court. Court? Court? Yeah. Court's another $500. Extra? Oh, yes, 200 only covers what he said just now. But I want you to testify in court. Well, you didn't say anything about that. Uh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Well, it's no good if he says it here where there's no witnesses. Oh, I'm a witness. She's a witness. She's a witness. She saw the whole thing. I heard her see the whole thing. Oh, no, I, no I'm not paying. Ray? Ray? Oh, oh, my God! Oh, 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 look what you're doing to that poor little, little old woman. I saw it all. You'll be thrown into Mill Heaven Penitentiary, and in the showers, big furry men with tattoos will bugger you, and they'll grab that little bar of soap, and they'll just... Wait, 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 wait. All right. I'll pay the lousy money. I'll pay your lousy 200. 300. Well, you said it was only... 300! This place is a bit of a rip-off. That's what I think this place is. Hey, give me back my wallet. You dirty little bitch, she here. You don't ever come in the house again. Now, oh, 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 o
What would you call a lottery where all the tickets were printed on exploding fish that you had to kiss violently? I'd call that stupid. What would you call a lottery where instead of having a draw, we all went out for a swim and never came back? I'd call that stupid. That's right, it's stupid lotto. Proceeds go to the bottom of an asbestos mine in Saskatchewan. Tickets available near my hand if I'm green. Hi. My name's Monty. And I'd like to welcome you to Mrs. Fenshaw's Grade 3 pageant. We are going to do a play for you by Norman Mailer called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now? Now. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre takes place one spring day in Texas. Thank you, hi, Mom. <laughs> I'm catching butterflies. Would you like to help? Yes, please, I would like to help you. Thank you, hi, Mom. <laughs> audience for obeying applause sign. Mention opening guest for more cheap applause. Oh, applause, applause, applause. Start opening monologue, which everyone thinks I wrote. Topical joke. Set up, set up, set up. Punchline. Oh, laugh far too loudly. Dirty innuendo. Oh, laugh at stupid jokes even though audience refuses. Mention small American city for more cheap applause. Oh, applause, applause, applause. Mention sidekick's drinking problem. Booze, booze, booze. Punchline. Oh, love it, stupid jokes, knowing someday idiot show just might be mine. Fan chance, dummy, with those old jokes and annoying laugh. Oh, hydro potion at hideous partner. Hey. Time to introduce guest starlet with large breasts for lots of cheap jokes. Ooh, applause, applause for idiot squirrel with tits. Applause, applause, applause. Act dumb for big sexist butt. Kiss two vile men I've never even met before as oh. if they're old friends. Leer at cleavage. Ignore whiskey breath. Wiggle ass for whistles from audience. Immediately praise talk show host for more rounds of applause from audience. Mm. Applause, 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 applause. Swallow pride and dignity. Casually mention movie. Feign surprise at movie. Mention movie title 15 times per sentence. Name every star and co-star for more rounds of applause from audience. Applause, 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 applause. Mention Starlet's mindless sitcom. Pretend it hasn't been canceled. Dated disco album. Pretend it's actually selling. Bikini poster. Breasts, breasts, breasts. Punchline. Act embarrassed but amused. Laugh, 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 laugh. Feel like puking. Laugh, laugh. Drink liquor room coffee mug. Sneak off to do commercial later. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Continue to insult Starlet. 
continue to take it and laugh, laugh, laugh. Read cue cards. Introduce commercial. Read cue card, read cue card, read cue card. Bark, bark, bark. Feed smelly goop to flea bitten mutt. Oh, eat vile junk only because I've been starved for three weeks. And ignore whiskey breath. Welcome back. Ask Starlet to sing song. Act coy and unprepared despite three days rehearsal. Beg Starlet, as if I even care. Make a big deal about giving in. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. wiggle. Applause, applause, applause. Introduce Starlet. Pause to gain audience attention and remember words. Old song. Getting away with old song. One that has a five note range Trying to stay in key Lip sync I should have gone with lip sync Shake my breast and smile a lot so they'll ignore my voice. Short lived. My career is short lived. Maybe I'll endorse shampoo and give up all this crap. Applause, 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 applause. Act as if applause was sufficient for ego. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Coming to end of show. Time to introduce intellectual author expounding boring new theory. Light applause for unknown author. Applause, 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 applause. applause, applause, applause. Greet ignorant host. Greet vacuous tart. No kiss for relative unknown. Sit down and try to expound philosophy to pea brain. Oh, cut off arrogant know-it-all. No more time for this crap. Aww. <laughs> time to go get drunk. Time to go get drunk. Time to go get drunk. Drunk already! Welcome to the Frantic Show. We're the Frantics, we're the Frantics, we'll be here till we go. We're the Frantics, we're the Frantics, we all breathe lots of air. We're the Frantics, we're the Frantics, we like to stand over there. We're the Frantics, we're the Frantics, we stand for law and order. 
we're the Frantics, we're the Frantics, we control the Canadian border. We're the Frantics, we're the Frantics, we watch young women dress. We're the Frantics, we're the Frantics, we never make a mess. We're the Frantics, we're the Frantics, welcome to the Frantic Show. We're the Frantics, we're the Frantics, we'll be here till we go. This is the community, our community. More than just a bunch of sunsets and buildings, the community is people. People like you and me. Young people, old people, rich people, poor people. All of us brothers and sisters, no matter what our ethnic background, choice of religion, or special interest is. This is the community that we are here to serve. We are Frantic Cable, and this is a Frantic Cable presentation. Hi, I'm Cliff Bluffcliff of Frantic Cable, and welcome to Frantic Cable, the year in review. We're going to be showing you clips from some of your favorite Frantic Cable shows. And plus, you'll be meeting the people who make these shows. You'll be meeting the producers, the cameramen, the sound technicians, the lighting people, the coffee machine. Someone put coffee machine in, that's, that's Doris. We call her the coffee machine because she makes coffee, she hates it. Sorry, uh, we're kidding, Doris. <laughs> we're kidding. Okay, we get calls in here every day from people, and although many of them are phoning for the pizza place that used to be here, a surprising number are actually phoning uh, to tell us how much they enjoy our, our frantic cable uh, community show uh, broadcasting. We went out on the street yesterday and we talked to some people out in the street. I love cable broadcasting. I watch everything they do with no attempt at intelligent discrimination. I watch all day, then I go straight to bed. Cable TV is better than the floor. Oh, yeah. Cable. Good stuff. Go oh, I remember, I remember inventing cable, you know. But this was a while ago, of course. This was a while. Well, this was before people were afraid to die horribly. You know, sure. I sleep all night, then I get up in the morning, evacuate my bowels, eat a great big bowl of Cap'n Crunch cereal, and watch more of my community channel. Oh, I love cable TV. Every day. Every That's day. good. Every day. Yeah, it's um, the pictures and everything, and you could get left the station. I think it's really nice. I'd rather watch cable TV than face my empty life. The reason that I like cable TV is because, A, it is very good. B, it helps our ethnic people. And C, my cousin Bob works there. He puts them in the houses so that you can, you can see them. Uh, he doesn't, you know, run cameras or anything. But I like it. Can I go now? I have no head. I have no head. I, I have no head. I have no head. Uh, yeah. No head. No head. I have none. I have no head. I have no head. I, ha I have no head. I've got a head, really, I do. Well, of course, I'm just a trucker man, and I don't know much about cable television, but there's one thing that struck me in my, in my trucking is that Cliff, Bluff Cliff, is doing a good job, and, and I think, conceivably, he could make uh, $400 a week as opposed to, say, just 350 And I think, uh, potentially, he could get his own coffee mug with, his, with a name, his name on it. And I think about his parking space is that maybe it's Hi, Cliff. a... <sighs> Hello. There's... Isn't that... Someone mistook me. Another thing about is the girls uh, never phone the Cliff at the station, and, and to me that's a shame, because what a guy that Cliff is. And, and Isn't that heartwarming to know that there are people out there who are so starved for entertainment, they actually turn on some of the shows that we crank out here at Fran Frantic Cable. 
that to me is good. Before we go and show you some of the scenes from some of your favorite shows, I'd like to talk to you informally, if I may, about, about community broadcasting. Community broadcasting, community broadcasting, community broadcasting. How much that has come to mean in the past few years to those of us directly involved with community broadcasting. Do you remember when your cable channel used to just be the channel you would turn to when you wanted to find the weather and the time? <laughs> We've come a long way since then. Now you couldn't find the time and the weather if you tried all day and night. And that's, that's due to uh, an increased commitment to the community. Uh, uh, bigger budgets and the, the CRTC. And thank God for the CRTC. They've done so much for us here. If it wasn't for them, I'd probably be out in the street or I'd, or I'd have a, a job somewhere not very good. I couldn't work at a real place. Do you, do you like the cable shows? I think you do. I, I'm, we're going to show you a colorful array of programs which we have here. The, how many times, how many times have you tuned in your TV set and watched a group of marginally aware individuals speak of things you don't particularly care to hear? Well, not very often if, like me, you turn and watch BJ and the Bear on the other channel. But that's a shame because here at Frantic Cable, we've got shows that are wonderful shows. Uh, we're particularly fond of our ethnic broadcasting. One of my favorite shows, and it's odd because I can't understand it, is our is a Hungarian show. Jó napot kívánok! Én vagyok a Zoltán Nibic, és ez a Magyar Óra. Ma mi fogunk beszélni Magyar Országról, amit mi mindig beszélünk róla, mert mi, fogunk, mi vagyunk Magyar Országról. És a, én, a, én akarok beszélni mindenkinek, aki most jött Kanadába. Te fogsz találni, hogy mindig beszélsz Magyar Országról. A én barátom, aki itt voltak 20 évig, mindig beszél Magyar Országról, mert nem akar elfelejteni. Mindig Ó, oh, hogy mondod, káromkodik, hogy milyen ó, oh, bullshit ez a kanadai. Those Hungarians are very are colorful and don't they dress interesting. Another show we have is the Anglo-Saxon show. Another show that deals with a minority or a majority. Hello, good evening and welcome. Testing is, hello, hello, is this on? Is, yes. this, is this working? Yes, it's working. How do you do? I'm Michael Redpath. And I'm Howie Redpath. Is this on? It's on. Welcome to another edition of the Anglo-Saxon Community Hour. Hey, Mike, it's on. Yeah, I know it's on. Well, this week we have a slideshow for you. We'll be taking a look at an attractive and colorful side of Anglo-Saxon culture. We've got some pictures of those wonderful and attractive lawn ornaments that you see. Yeah, a special feature are going to be some pictures of those little darkies with the fishing poles. I, I believe Howard meant to say Negro people, not darkies. Negroes. Thank you. While we're waiting for those pictures to arrive from Photomat... Hi. A lot of people ask us at... Uh, at the Frantic Show, a cable show, where we have short people shows. Well, we say we do. What about Toulouse Lautrec? He was a great short person. You're right, Nurk. That's a very familiar name, Toulouse Lautrec. Mm. What, what did he do, Needle? I think he was a photographer. You're thinking of Belloc. Faddle, Lautrec was a painter. Yeah, his pictures are on display at the Van Gogh exhibit. Oh, Van Gogh was another great short person. Baff. Wait a minute, guys. Look at the monitors. 
Uh, hey, hey fans, we're not framed in the sh lower the cameras for God's sake. Come on. Va Van Gogh wasn't short. Paul Williams was. Short of talent. Hey, can any of you guys lend me five dollars till Monday? Why? I'm kind of short. Uh, a, a lot of people want to watch the Bill Smith show, and so let's take a look at that, that crazy Bill Smith show. Welcome to the Bill Smith Show. Me, I'm Bill Smith. And I'd like to dedicate this show to Bill Smith. My guest today is Bill Smith, a kind of a wonderful guy and a bit of a wet. Remember, today's show is pre-recorded so I can whip home and tape it on my VTR. Okay, let's meet our first guest, Bill Smith. Bill, how the hell are you? Well, I'm not too bad. You're looking well. Am I? You be the judge. No, I have to say you look great, and I love that coat. Well, it is a beaut, isn't it? Yep, I love it. What did you pay for that? You'll never guess. Oh, I think I will. Fifty. Oh, dear. Well, hang on. Problem? Yes, we do have a bit of a problem. And what's that? Well, the camera's tilted. But that's no problem. Bill Smith is on camera, and he can fix it. There you go. Isn't that guy good? Boy, he's a talent. That's why we hired him. Obey. Okay, Bill, you're here today with something special, aren't you? Well, yes, I am. Exactly what is it? I got some slides from Port Carling. Port Carling slides. Can I have a look at those? Those look nice. Why don't you show us one? Don't mind if I do. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This is my favorite. This is a... How are we centered? That's a bit small, isn't it? We got a problem, it's a bit small. Well, don't worry, we got the technical crew to end all technical crews. He'll zoom it in. No problem, just hang tight. Don't go away now. No, I don't think they will. You know Bill, he's got nothing better to do, that's for sure. Okay, we're back again now. So you got this slide of Port Carling, do you? And it's a beaut. Is it really? Could you show it to us? I can indeed. Okay, how's that? Is that good? Okay, you can see the slide here. Now there's me, and there's my sister, sister Ethel. She's my sister. Well, you don't have to tell me. I know who she is. Well, I suppose you do, don't you? Yes, I do, you big palooka. Oh, I've got a sister named Ethel myself. Do you now? It's a small world. It sure is for Bill Smith. Yes, sir. Okay, well, why don't we take a look at some home movies? Have you got some? Have I? I've got thousands of them. You see? Well, first we'll have to zoom her out there. Okay, just zoom out that camera. It's no problem. Okay, here we go. There we go. Hey, you do a fine job. Well, thank you. After all, I'm not too busy to take the time to give a kind of a product now. Whoa! Hello? Hello? Something here? What's wrong with this now? You know it. Just a sec. The stupid God. Why the? Oh, we're back again. Good. Okay. You say, you say you've got a movie. Well, I do. 
You see, the thing is, what is the thing? The thing is James Arness in a suit. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, I like it. Mind you, I've heard it before. Figured you would. Figured you would. Oh, we got us a problem. Hey, we do indeed. Don't tell me it's the camera. Here, let me get it this time. Okay, this one's on me. No problem at all. Here we go. There we go. How does that look? Yeah, that looks, that looks just fine. Okay, now you got yourself some home movies and oh my, oh my God, oh no. Yes, Bill is now busy trying to earn enough money to buy a new camera for us. And won't that be nice? We've arranged a little collage of some of our favorite shows here that we unfortunately don't have time enough to show you. Let's have a look at some shows. Community Spotlight. Community Watch. Community Highlight. Community Overview. Community Identity, Community Feel, Community, community Insight. Uh, we wish we could have shown more of those shows to you, but in fact we didn't. We have now for a show for you to watch uh, uh, Barber, Home Haircutting, and, and you. Let's of take you a look at it. do it yourself. Why? Don't be silly. If little foreign men with funny smelling colognes can do it, then why can't you? Why? Take me, for example. I've overcome my double vision to the point where I have no idea what mistakes I'm making. <laughs> Today, we're going to do brush cuts. <laughs> Not a very popular style these days, but unfortunately, our customer is running out of hair. Now, the first thing you do is strap the customer down into the barber's chair. This prevents his writhing from forcing you to strain to reach his head, and it prevents him from leaving before you're finished. Also, it prevents your scissors from going into his eye, because that could nix your dollar tip. Now, next thing you do is sharpen the scissors. Blindfold, please. No, no, not for him, for me. Right? Now spin me around. One, two, three, okay. We had a lot of fun taping that show. All the guys would come in and, and we'd watch it, and we put a big plastic thing on the floor so that the, it didn't get all messy and everything. We had a lot of fun with that. Another show, the next show we're going to show you is from our sports segment, Contact Stamp Collecting Show. Hi, sports fans. Gruber Half-Life here with another edition of Contact Stamp Collecting. This week, live from the site of the 1920 Mini Olympics for the Spiritually Handicapped. Boy, oh boy, in the featherweight airmail division this week, there was drama aplenty afoot as 19-year-old Carnuba Montan defends his title against Matt the Tongue LaMarche from over on Gully Avenue over a 12-guinea Flying Auklander issue with double cancellation marks. Whoa! Let's take a look at the action in round five. I wish we had time to show that, and we do. Instead, we'll be showing you exercise show. This is something very heartwarming to me. Um, a man, the guy who's been doing our exercise show, Ed Cooney, uh, last month he had a heart, uh, a, a stroke, and and we thought, well, that's it. Ed won't be down. But do you know, a week after his stroke, Ed was back in here, and he was doing his show, just like old times. What, what guts, what courage the man has. Let's watch Ed Cooney's exercise show. Hi. You know, a lot of stress these days is placed on muscle and power. Uh, I'm old-fashioned. I'm more for shaping and toning myself. We're going to do some old exercises today that Everybody has fun with. Our first one, get yourself a little space. Away we go. That's it. Yeah, no, isn't this fun? Feel the old blood coursing through your body? Wish I could. Get that knee up, Gladys. Another great favorite is the chest expander. Just like that. that. Just feel that lung expand and contract, taking in all that oxygen. There. Be sure to use both arms, ladies. You don't want to wind up looking like Amazons. Now, our last exercise is a good favorite called stride jumps. This is a lot of fun. Everybody give yourself a bit of space. Here we go. Ready? One, two, go. Oh. 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 
Okay, well, how about single leg races? Sure, lots of fun. One, two, that's it. What a, what a trooper that Ed is. I just hope I'm still going like that when I'm 37. I, I don't know what makes a man keep on going like that, I think you know? The stroke affected his thinking or something. Gross me out. Uh, uh, this is Roland Grit. Roland produces a lot of the shows like the one you've just seen. Uh, but not that one. I didn't produce that one. <laughs> no, no. Why don't you, do you have something to say to the people at home? Well, yeah. uh, thank you, Clef, I do. I'd just like to thank the community for the opportunities I've had this year to work with you and some of the programming. And Cliff, I'd like to say that I'm trying to line up some wet t-shirt contests and some nude mud uh, wrestling. Uh, 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 the CRTC uh, has 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 it suggested that that maybe you tell people uh, what it's like to be a producer. Oh well, it's of course you know it's very demanding. Yes. We sit in the office down the hall behind big desks and uh, we make up lists of the shows and we put beside them the people that are in them and their telephone numbers. It's very exciting work, um, especially when the phone numbers are changed for relisting. Uh, we interview people, screen them for some of the programs that they want to have on. We have to do away with programs like Your Poodle and You, Vines of Plenty, Gravy, Gravy, Gravy. And it's a shame because a lot of them are good ideas, too. It's true, but Gravy, 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 the budget was just too big for that one, Cliff. Too bad. Good idea, though. And also, we help with the production. We're in the control room, sitting behind them, helping them select the buttons and the camera angles, putting our arms around them, kissing them on the nape of the neck, uh, asking I'm, I'm, them uh, out uh, for uh, supper. Uh, and uh, uh, Roland, maybe you'd like to join me in, in watching our next show, which, which, one is, is, it? which is the f Funny Community Comedy Show. The, oh. It's funny. About a year ago, I was sitting in my office, and th these kids came in, and they said they wanted to do a show. And I said, well, what kind of a show do you want to do? And they said, comedy show. And I said, well, how can you do comedy? Everyone thinks they're a comedian. And then they all fell down on the floor of my office. And I knew right then the kind of show we were going to have. Join us in watching the funny community comedy show. Oh, look at the time. I got to I gotta go, Cliff. What are you? Go. Hi. Welcome to the funny community comedy show. With way. high school kids. Um, Gee. Brought to you by the nutsiest guys who ever invaded North Yak. I have been trying and trying, but I have not been able to figure out how to make this airplane fly. Please, Professor, I'm trying to introduce my show. The aeronautical possibilities escape me for the time being. I don't know what. You forgot to put wings on it. <laughs> I knew that, that there was something wrong. Make a face. Now oh, make a better face. Boy, am I ever glad he's gone. I'm going. Oh, boy, am I ever glad he's gone. Hey, I, so, uh, I'll adjust your mic, okay? Look. There's nothing. Oh! What are you doing? Ah, I'm trying to do this show. Look at your, look at your, your, your flower. Oh, you guys. <laughs> Don't swear. Oh. We'll have to cut this. A loaf of bread. <laughs> I've seen that a thousand times, and I, I still crack up when they fall down. <laughs> uh, another show. Our next show here is Mr. Directions Show. We try to get older people in here telling about their experiences and, and their past. And we were lucky to hit upon a guy like Mr. Directions, someone who's really been around. Let's watch Mr. Directions. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 1903, that was a pretty good year for me. Pretty good year. Gee, Mr. Directions, you don't seem old enough to remember 1903. Oh, I remember 19... I was plenty old enough in 1903. Sure. Sure. Well, I remember that was... That was just after the death of my wife, Queen Victoria. Wow. You were married to Queen Victoria? Well, yeah. It was a... It was a situation, of course, because I had to get special dispensation from the Roman Catholic Church. You can imagine. Luckily, I was Pope at the time. You were Pope? Of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pope Pius, Mr. Directions, the first. The first what? 
the first black pope. Oh boy, it wasn't easy being a woman back then. We had troubles. Oh, we had troubles, I could tell you. Sure, hectic, hectic. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. The movable type and all of that, you know, sure. Barely had time to get up in my supersonic nuclear powered jet aircraft and shoot down things. Oh yeah. Wow, they had jet airplanes back in 1903, Mr. Directions? Well, not official. A, a little insight there into government cover-up. That's what I call educational. And that's what we are here for. We are here for, for you, the viewer. Uh, a lot of people in our audience, apparently, are women. And we decided that we would have some women broadcasting for women, and particularly feminist broadcasting for, for particularly feminist people. And, and why not? And because it's a very valid and interesting uh, our point of view. We've got a show called Feminist Cheerleaders, which has a following, at least of the, the two or three people that are on the show. Let's take a look at Feminist Cheerleaders. I mean, he's practically living in the Stone Age. <laughs> oh, Taffy, yeah. have you had any experience with sexual discrimination? Have I? Every single football game, all I ever hear is cartwheels, cartwheels. I mean, they're just so immature. Boy, have a meaning. I mean, just treating you like a sexual object. Everybody does. Even the guys with zits. That's disgusting. That's absolutely gross. Well, they do have them, you know. I know, but you don't have to talk about it. I mean, they can't help it. Mm. Felicity, mm. have you were mentioning me, to me before that you've had some problems with sexual harassment on the job. Did I? I forgot. Well, what did you mean by sexual harassment? Oh, heavy petting. You mean that's a real problem? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, none of those guys can keep their paws off me. And I don't even like them. I mean, if it were Brad Fulton or one of them cute guys, well, yeah, <laughs> sure. But when one of those pimply things... Gross talk. I don't want to hear any more gross talk, okay? Oh, come on. All I said was... Don't that say it again. It's absolutely gross. I mean, it's disgusting. It's the grossest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> but, well, uh, thank you for being with us this week on Feminist Cheerleaders. I was Babs O'Toole. She was... Kathy Morgan, and she was Felicity Taper, and we'll be back next week for another edition. Bye. Oh. Women unite, stand up and fight. Crush the oppressive male regime. Who can do it? Women can do it. Who can do it? Women can do it. Freedom, equality, yay! Well, I always say, as, as long as you're going to have feminists, why not have pretty ones? Well, that's a, a good cross-section of some of the shows that, that we do here at, at Frantic Cable. I'm sorry we couldn't show you our, our, dancing, our dancing show, because I was a guest on it once or twice, and I, I learned a lot. And that, to me, that's what community television is all about. It's learning. It's finding out. It's seeing and it's doing, and it's making a good living for me and for my friends, and I'd like a larger car. But those of you who have, have looked into, into community television, like me, and thank you. 